This is not a test. This is an emergency broadcast transmission. All right, guys, welcome back. Today's question is, is all killing sin? So we're going to study the Bible. The Bible also says sin is transgression of the law. The Bible says that anything not of faith is sin. And in this picture here that we're looking at, we see Cain and Abel. And Cain obviously killed his brother Abel, which was definitely a sin. And the Bible records that. But Abel was offering an excellent sacrifice by faith. And anything not of faith is sin. So therefore, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice and it wasn't sin. So clearly there is some killing in the Bible that is definitely not sin. Now let's take a look closely at what kind of killing is not sin. It says in Genesis 9 6 following this event that whoso sheddeth man's blood by man shall his blood be shed. Now is God commanding his children to do something that is unrighteous? Is God commanding his children to sin? Is God teaching his children sin? By God commanding his people to destroy murderers is he unrighteous? We need to ask that question because the character of God here is definitely at question here and we need to examine this in light of the Word of God. Some people believe that love simply cannot kill. He never did and never will. Is God love or is he a killer? Well, the Bible doesn't teach that God never killed. And the Bible also says that God is love. So is it possible that maybe someone is pitting God against himself? Maybe someone is misunderstanding God's true and righteous judgments. Maybe someone does not understand justice. And maybe that's why they're coming to these conclusions. See, someone else said to me, all killings are a violation of the law. Is that really truth? Is that what the Bible teaches? That all killing is violation of the sixth commandment? And that we're basically, if God were to kill, he would be pit against his own commandment. He would be violating his own commandment. Command people or angels to kill, he would be commanding them to violate the sixth commandment. Is that what God is really doing? Commanding people to violate his own law? This would surely have some consequences with respect to the character of God. See, the Bible talks about God commanding killing. He said, the man must surely be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones outside the camp. So as the Lord commanded Moses, all the congregation brought him outside the camp and stoned him with stones and he died. This was God's commandment. Now why would God command such a thing if he's teaching the people that killing and all killing is contrary to his law? I don't know about you, but if you're commanding your children to do things that are against your commandments, then maybe you are not a good parent. And um, that would be the look that I would have if that was really what God was doing, commanding people to do things against what they've been told. And not just that, but it would also be a double-minded God telling them to do one thing and then telling them not to do the same thing that he's telling them to do. Which kind of God do you worship? Do we worship a double-minded God? See, the Lord commanded Moses and said, this man shall be stoned. There was a reason for it. It was to protect the people. Sometimes people can't see the bigger picture and they're missing the mercy. They're missing the love and they're missing the true spirit of God behind the true and righteous judgment and why God would actually command it in the certain situations that he did. Now, who ordained the sacrificial system? Because God ordained that they should put animals to death, that animals should be slain. We need to understand something. Did God ordain a system of murder, a system of violation of the sixth commandment, a system that was completely contrary to his law? Wasn't it part of his law? Wasn't it something that pointed to the judgment to come on all of humanity in this world? I think God had a point with respect to this and he definitely wouldn't command his people to do something that was contrary to his law. Obviously upholding his law was part of the sacrificial system and that involved a pointing towards the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, which is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. So is all killing wrong? We need to really examine this in light of the word. Is it wrong to kill a mouse? How about a bunch of mice if they've infested your house? Sometimes that happens and sometimes varmints run crazy in the houses and people's homes. Is it okay to kill them? You know, is it wrong? Is all killing wrong? Again, we need to consider this. What if a bear was attacking your friend or your wife or your family member or whoever it was and you had a gun or an opportunity to stop that bear and you could kill it? Would you think it was unrighteous to kill the bear? I don't think that a lot of people who believe in this God doesn't kill or God can't kill doctrine have really thought this through to a great extent. How about these mosquitoes here? I mean, when they're on your, there's one right there. Well, he's dead. But anyways, with respect to these mosquitoes, I mean, is it okay to kill mosquitoes? Is all killing a violation of the sixth commandment? Is it unrighteous? 
is a person who kills a mosquito going to lose their eternal life? The Bible actually says thou shall not murder. And if you read it carefully, Exodus 20, 13, the Hebrew word for kill in this verse here is the Hebrew word ratsack. And the strong tells us that it means especially to murder. And in most translations, it is translated as murder. So the Bible is teaching us, thou shall not rat sack. Rat sack means murder. But is that what killing means in all situations? Is all killing rat sack? Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 32. It says, to me belong vengeance and recompense or repayment, saith the Lord. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill, and the word there is actually not the word ratsack, but mooth. And I make alive, and I wound, and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. For if I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever, if I wet my glittering sword and make mine hand in judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. So here, let's just ask a question. If God said, I ratsack, then would you not believe that God is doing something that he's commanded us not to do? He's violating his law. But God does not rat sack. That would be a violation of his law. If somebody believes that all killing is rat sack, then they would have to say that God is violating his own law. But God does not rat sack. He moves. God does not rat sack. He does kill, but not all killing is murder. All rat sack is moose, but not all moose is rat sack. That means all all murder is killing, but not all killing is murder. Some killing is justified, some is judgment, some is righteous. And we'll look at this as we continue. See, look at David. What about killing the bear or killing the lion? It says, David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Now here, what would you say? Would you say David was unrighteous for protecting the flock against the bear or the lion? Obviously, this is not murder. This is not a violation of the sixth commandment. This is protection. You don't accuse the judge or the executioner of being guilty of violating the law if they're executing the judgment. As God said, whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. Now it says that the wages of sin is death in Romans 6, 23. And some people will say, well, the wages of sin are not paid by God. But God did say, I will repay saith the Lord, I will kill him with the sword. That's what the Bible says. In Numbers 35, 16, it says, if he smite with an instrument of iron, so that he die, he is a murderer. The murderer, the rat sack, shall surely be put to death, mooth. Again, big distinguishment between rat sack and mooth. And if we're studying carefully, we will see the differences. But if we're just listening to somebody tell us what it means, then we're going to have somebody else explaining to us something that is completely contrary to the Word of God. We need to be careful to study the Word of God carefully so we can understand the difference between the death penalty or the consequences for sin and sin itself. Some people don't understand that there is a difference between the judgment and between murder. They think murder is judgment, and this is not what the Bible teaches. This is not what any law would ever teach. Deuteronomy 32, 39, See now that I, even I, am he, and that there is no God with me. I kill. Moose. God does not rat sack or violate his law. And it's important to understand, God does kill, which is to uphold his law. As Numbers 35, 16 says, this is called justice. And because of a low understanding of right and justice, many have come to perceive that God is forbidden to destroy the sinner. And they believe that it would be unrighteous, even though he says he will do it. I wonder sometimes who will say that God will not do as he says he will do. Who is the one that came up with the question, has God really said? Who's the one that twisted the word of God around in the beginning? Because of the judgment, thou shall surely die. It was Satan. And we have to be careful because Satan will have us questioning every word that's in the Bible if we are not careful. Let me continue here. He says, I will kill you with the sword. That's what it says in Exodus 22, 24. This is God's law here. Is God violating his law or upholding his law? How do you read? See, Exodus 22 says, I will moose you with the sword. God does not rat sack or murder again. He's not violating the sixth commandment. If it said, I will rat sack you with the sword, then it would be a violation of the sixth commandment, which 
would be contrary to his law and he would be violating his law but he will pay the wages this is what god says and it's not unrighteous to kill with the sword god commanded many of his children to do so in certain instances but it is unrighteous to use the sword unwisely or unrightly as it says he that liveth by the sword shall die by the sword so we want to be careful on how that sword is used but again deuteronomy 24 14 and 15 thou shall not oppress a hired servant Thou shalt give him his hire, his wages, lest he cry against thee unto the Lord, and it be sin unto thee. So it would be sin not to pay the wages. And God will pay the wages, as he says, I will repay, saith the Lord. My judgments are just, they're true, they're righteous, and if God didn't pay the wages, it would be sin. It would be something that would violate the law. But let's just look at a few examples here of people who were commanded by God to destroy. See, in Numbers chapter 25, 7 and 9, it says, When Phinehas, the son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron, the priest, saw it, he rose up from among the congregation, took a javelin in his hand, and he went after the man of Israel into the tent and thrust both of them through. The man of Israel and the woman threw her belly, so the plant plague was stayed from the children of Israel, and those that died in the plague were twenty and four thousand. So how many were dying because no one was doing anything until Phineas finally picked up the sword or the javelin and destroyed. Phineas the son of Eleazar, the son of Aaron the priest, hath turned my wrath away from the children of Israel. Behold, I give unto him the covenant of peace. And he was also given the covenant of peace, a peaceful covenant. Also the Levites at Mount Sinai, he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp, and slay every man his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. So here again, the Levites are commanded to go through and slay. And they're commanded by God. These were the ones that were faithful. They did what was righteous and they were commanded to pick up the sword and also do which was righteous and if we read the story carefully we will understand if we see the big picture that had god not stepped in here and caused them to do this that they would not have understood the seriousness of their sin we need to study our bibles carefully we need to come to proper conclusions we need to be careful imagine david and goliath that you were saying hey david just slayed goliath and cut off his head he should have been merciful and it was wrong for him to pick up the sword and do such a thing that is not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that David was a great man of faith and he saved many. And sometimes people don't see salvation in the judgments of God. Sometimes they only see the killing and the maiming and the other things that have happened, which are not good. But they are all a cause of sin. They are caused by us as humanity who have brought this upon ourselves. Yes. But do we pick up the sword? No, sometimes God will pick up the sword. Sometimes he'll send his angels. Sometimes he'll send his armies and he will destroy. And God is not going to tell his children to do something that he would not do. Again, Elijah and the prophets of Baal. Elijah slayed all the prophets of Baal. Was it unrighteous or was it righteous? Because rain followed right after and God commended what Elijah did. Brother M has said, praise God. God has been showing me more and more every day and it's incredible. No way I could have had been saved by faith before when I was convinced God was above his law. This light is life changing. They believe that God was above his law and that it was a violation of God's law to kill. And they believe that God does not kill. This is not what the Bible teaches. Again, another person, H, answers M and says, Life changing is absolute truth. I am so blessed by this gem of understanding. For those who found this gem, there is no going back. Praise God. Do you remember the story of Saul? Saul was commanded by the Lord who sent him and appointed him to be king over his people. Samuel said, Now hearken therefore unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. In this interesting story, Saul thought he knew better than God. And that seems to be the way in the God doesn't kill movement is that they believe that they know better than God. They believe that they are even above God in regards to light and knowledge above the prophets. But this is what happened to Saul when he rejected the word of the Lord and the Lord said, go and slay the Amalekites. The Lord said these things and he rejected his words, just as many are rejecting God's word. And it said, for rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry because thou has rejected the word of the Lord. He also has rejected thee from being king. 
How many in the God Doesn't Kill movement might be rejecting the plainest statements in the word? How many of them might think they know better? How many of them might bring the sheep and the ass and the oxen back? How many of them might think, oh God, what do you know? You don't know what you're doing. How many of them would have stood up to God and said, no, no, no. And that it's contrary to your character, God. How could you ever command me to go slay the Amalekites? This is wrong. And you remember Samuel brought out the king that Saul saved and he slayed him. And you know what he said? It's spiritualism. You're spiritualizing away my plain statements in my word. It comes from the devil. It's the same thing that happened in the garden. When that old serpent in the garden had Eve question the plainest statement saying, Hath God really said, Thou shall not surely die? That was his answer. And his answer was completely contrary to the plainest statements in the word of God. And we need to be careful because God doesn't kill or God doesn't destroy is completely contrary to the plainest statements in the word of God. There are hundreds of statements that show that the Lord will destroy and he does destroy. And it's not unrighteous for him to do so. And it's not a violation of the sixth commandment. 1 Samuel 28, 6 and 7 says that Saul inquired of the Lord and the Lord would not answer him anymore. And this is what's going to happen when you keep twisting the word of God saying he doesn't kill. You're not going to hear the voice of the Lord anymore because it's not going to come through anymore. But the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at Endor. Saul had to search for other sources outside of the word of God. So too must those who reject the plainest statements in the word of God. And that is what is coming. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord could not answer him. And this is what's going to happen to many. They're going to go to other sources. They're going to go to other books outside the Bible that contradict the Bible. They're going to look for other people that can help them. But again, then said the woman, whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, bring me up Samuel. And remember, the dead don't know anything. And let me just share with you a few last points here with respect to some of the websites that are teaching these things because it is clear that they are teaching completely contrary to the Word of God and basically saying that the Word of God is from Satan. Remember, rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. Now, there's a website called thecharacterofgod.org and on this site, there is a site extended to it which is called doublemindedgod.com and on this website doublemindedgod.com you'll find that there is a chart that says there is a blend between the character of God and it says is your God double-minded that's what this site is about is your God double-minded and then they'll say look Genesis 1 says God is a life-giving creator and then in Genesis 6 it says that he's a God of destruction some when looking at this they think that maybe these are contradictory and in this on this website, you'll notice that many of the plainest statements in the Word of God are rejected. It says, by retaining the idea that all writings in the Old Testament, which have been assumed to have been inspired by God, are in fact inspired, on the basis of that traditional belief, is to place tradition over the example of Jesus Christ. So she's saying that the Word of God from the Old Testament is only assumed to be inspired by God and that's not really inspired. On the same page of her website she says this, by coming to dwell with us Jesus was to reveal God both to men and to angels. He was the word of God. God's thought made audible. This cannot be said for Moses, Joshua, Elijah, David or any of the prophets and certainly not all of the writings in the Bible which were repeatedly edited over the centuries. So Moses, Joshua, Elijah, David, and all the prophets were not the word of God. They were not mouthpieces of God. Is that true? Is this website telling you the truth? Is this website not getting you to question, has God really said? Did Moses really speak in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy? And did God speak through Moses? I think he did. But this website clearly has come to view God in a different light. They don't believe God can kill, so therefore they are taking a lot of the statements out of the scriptures. And this is only logical when you believe in this doctrine that you're going to come to these conclusions. On the same page of the website, it says, Jesus said to the Jews that they had heard it said that they should perform retributive violence. Eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Christ did not state that Moses actually wrote those words, but that the people had heard those words. Whose advice should a Christian follow? Christ's instructions which are spirit and life or the Old Testament instruction? 
Obviously, one set of instructions is in harmony with the moral standard of God, the Ten Commandments, and the other instructions are not in harmony with the Ten Commandments. So she is saying here that Christ did not state that Moses actually wrote those words. She's saying that these words are not from Moses and these words are not from God that these are not in harmony with the Ten Commandments. And furthermore, she says in the next paragraph, anything that does not harmonize with the law of God, the character of God, does not have its origin with God, but with his enemy, Satan, or Satan's agents. So she is saying that the judgments in Exodus originated with Satan because they don't harmonize with the Ten Commandments. She's saying that they violate the Ten Commandments. That any of the judgments that were given in the Old Testament, that anything with regards to the sacrificial system originated with Satan. Do you see what manner of spirit this is that is rejecting the plainest statements in the Word of God? What we need to do is we need to study our Bibles carefully. We need to get out all the statements in regards to the Word of God. Where in the Word of God does it say God will not destroy? Where in the word of God does it say it's contrary of God to command his angels or his people to destroy? That's what the Bible says. The Bible says Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord. And this is regarding the judgments, including eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth, which is written in Exodus chapters 21 to 23. Clearly, this is from the Lord and it's not from Satan. And for people to say it's from Satan, they need to take a step back because they're putting God on trial, they're putting his word on trial, and they're at the point where they're going to cause many to reject the plainest statements in the word of God. It's no different than what was given in the Garden of Eden when the devil came along and tried to get Eve to question God's word, and then she did, and all of humanity was fallen. We need to discern, we need to understand as God's people, to understand that his judgments are true and righteous, and stop framing God as a murderer. There's a danger here. You're going to be framing God as guilty of breaking his own law. Guys, I'm glad you're with me. Please share these videos far and wide. Help people to understand and God willing, we can come together and stand on the same platform together. We are not against each other. We're all for one another. As the Bible says, Jesus was all for us. So we are all for one another. And we have to have that same spirit. And I know some think that I'm of the wrong spirit because I'm not accepting this. But the reality is, is that I don't accept any doctrine that contradicts the word of God or is in war with the word of God. Instead of searching those sources out, you'll start to come back to God's word and accept the plainest statements as they read. And start to question, why is it that these judgments have taken place? Why is God doing these things? Why does he command his people to do these things? Why does he command his angels to do these things? And is it not righteous? We want to recognize the truth between judgment and murder. We want to recognize the truth between violating God's law and upholding God's law. And we don't want to call evil good and good evil. Guys, again, we'll see you in the next video. God bless you and be with you. And hopefully I can get another video out soon. God bless.